Well, press live. Don't do what? I press live. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Sorry, yeah, we, um, we're we having a little bit of fun backstage as people start to join. Um, Matt was trying to find a hairbrush. Um, yeah. Andy was questioning whether he wants to grow his hair out longer. Um, he was really rubbing it in. And uh, Mike was... <laughs> you don't rub it in anymore. <laughs> Mike was working. Uh, in fact, I've now got to that age where you're nervous about drying your hair too hard after you've got out the shower of the fear of loss. I've now got well, to that's that what age. I did, though, mate, because I, I kept drying. I kept washing my face for longer and longer each day, and I just realised that it was just disappearing. It's when. Yeah. It's I, 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 I blame the towel. It gently. <laughs> anyway. Enough um, of that. Enough about uh, hair loss. Um, talking of hair, Georgina, I believe, had her hair done this week. I, I saw a post. Um, so I'm sure she's looking exceptionally glam, um, looking to get out this weekend and uh, show it off, I'm sure. Nice to see you, Georgina. Um, what is the agenda for tonight? The, the hook to keep people watching. Um, is it going to be worth your while? Well, definitely. We've got some awesome statistics. Matt's turned into Sean. That's interesting. I think I will happen, yeah. No, that's that's something new and exciting. That's um. That's I never. Really happened. Don't know what happened there. <laughs> <laughs> Got to find someone with more hair. <laughs> that, that, that must have been it. Yeah, yeah, clearly. Hello, Lee, for watching. Um, if you're watching, you can hear us fine. Please pop the the like button. The like button is the blue thumb. It's the other way around, but on this, it kind of it's hard. I look a little bit weird doing that, so I'm not going to do that again. Um, so what we're going to talk about, right move house price index. This is interesting because what we're comparing now is we're comparing the start of this year with no stamp duty holiday versus the start of last year when the stamp duty holiday was in full swing. That is going to be interesting to discuss. We've got some stats on that. What's going on with the mortgage rates? You can't see, but on my desktop right here from Uncle Dave, I have got the five year fixed deals. If anyone follows the Avocado Partners pages, you will see posts for the two year fixed deals. Um, which are mind-bogglingly cheap. I got the five-year deals here, so I'm going to share those with everyone in a second. Um, we're going to talk about a few other bits. What's going on with the market at the moment? Baby boom, lockdown, baby boom. It's a thing. Um, there's lots more babies that are under the age of 18 months at the moment. It's down to lockdown. It was boring. Everyone had a lot of fun. Uh, Sean saying hi, and Georgina's commented on my. Um, is she out this weekend? I'm a mum. I don't get nights out. Callan, that's not fair. Every mum needs a night out every now and then. You had a good night out at the avocado Christmas party, Georgina. I can vouch for that. Um, who else we got? Sanjay's asking questions. Evening. Summarise the start to 2022 property market in three words. Go. As you were. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Stress than 10 letters. That's pretty simple. Beat that. Moving um, on up. Oh. Moving on up. Moving on up. Matt? I was going to say hot, 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 but I thought mine sounded rubbish compared to the other two. So we'll just stick with that. I'm going to go with, uh, I'm going to stay on brand in case uh, our branding expert is watching and say, we love it. The new slogan on the back of some people's hoodies. Um, but yeah, Sanjay loved that. If anyone else is watching, they want to summarise in three words, much like Ellen has just done. Bonkers, bananas, avocados. Um, totally agree. Uh, evening, Ellen. Good to see you. Um, Georgina said she hadn't been out for four years, so she had to make the most of it. Love that. Um, let's touch on some property stuff before we get carried away. Um, talking about nights out in the early parts of January. So right move. Right move for all of their um, negativity that they sometimes get in the industry, do have some fantastic data. Um, there's over 11 million searches every single month on Right Move. It's one of the most popular websites in the UK. I think, is it top five, Mike, did we say the other day? Uh, it gets as many, if not more, hits than the BBC. So it's got some data resource to share. Um, Andy, what's going on with valuation requests in the start of it, according to the house price index? Do you have that data for us? Why is Andy Mead? I do. Not new homes related, but I will go off brand for a minute. Right move have 
announced there's been a 44% uplift on property valuations based against the same time last year. So year on year, 44% more valuations requested, 44% more valuations requested this year than there was last year, which actually was at the start of the extension of the stamp duty threshold. That's massive, isn't it? Because I think that's everyone's big concern at the moment is we all know stock levels are super low. Um, if one of you could just turn your volume down a little bit because it's getting a feedback for me. Um, but we know, yeah, we know that it's super low on volume levels. But if people are getting valuations now, it hopefully means towards the end of the month, they'll come to the market and there'll be more activity for people to go and view, which is exciting. What about uh, demand, Matt? Yeah, they've noticed a massive increase based on this time last year, about 15% increase in buyer registrations from, from this point last year. And there was a lot of buyer confidence at this point last year because they knew they'd be saving on the stamp duty. So in actual fact, that shows that there's a still a massive demand out there from people still wanting to buy property. You couple that with not a lot of property on the market, you're going to get some strong asking prices. Yeah. Yeah, it's the... Um... It's the age old thing in the property market demand supply. Is it a seller's market? Is it a buyer's market? There's no doubt it's a seller's market at the moment. The seller sets the price. And um, if it hasn't moved on in four weeks, the seller got the price wrong or the agent got the price wrong. And, and it's that market factually, isn't yeah. it at the moment? Yeah. Mike tend to agree on that. Yeah, massively. Um, it's, I think it's going to be a year for good agents this year because there's not much stock available, but there are more valuations happening, which means there's a good chance a good agent is going to know the house that you're going to buy, but it won't be on the market yet. So if you're a buyer out there, get to know your estate agents in your local area because they might be key to, to putting a deal together that no one else will see. Yeah, totally agree. Matt, I've just got an alert that you've um, your scheduled new listing in our close wokenham has just gone just gone live on facebook do you want to tell us a little yeah. bit about that one Is yeah it a yeah, so, yeah it's um a, yeah two, well, so you, you're giving it away two bedroom mid terrace house and our close for the garage it's um it's uh it requires a little bit of work but i actually speaking to a lot of people at the moment that don't necessarily want the finished article quite want to go in there and do something to make it oh, i've turned back into sean it's my computer <laughs> There you go, look at that. Why, why have I you got know. Sean saved as your um, profile I, photo? <laughs> I, I, I really I can't, tell you, I can't tell you that. Um, I'm, I'm envious of his hair. We could just run with that. Um, so, the, yeah, our close, two bedroom, mid terrace, lovely garden, garage in a block, um, overlooks some beautiful fields at the front. Um, it's pitched deliberately at a sensible price considering the work that needs doing. Um, We've um, decided to list it at three hundred and thirty-five thousand, and anyone looking for a two-bedroom in two-bedroom house in Woosehill will know that they're comfortably three fifty plus. Uh, there you go. Um, three fifty plus. So yeah, no, good instruction, and it'll be going live. Um, well, the video's now on my on my socials, and um, it'll be going live um, hopefully tomorrow. Good stuff. Love that, um, Lee. Thanks for joining us. Would love to hear about the land market. How is land at the moment? Houses are in short supply. Is land the same or is that different? Share the love, let us know. Um, Georgina's asking how have we found it in terms of new listings. All I can say is um, valuations are up for, for, for our, our brand is all I can talk about in, in comparison. Um, we are receiving lots more valuation requests than we ever have done at the start of a month. So that's positive news. Hopefully it means more people looking to sell. I've seen a lot of beat the portals going on this week for Avocado Partners. So if you're not following uh, the socials for the Avocado Partner in the area looking to buy in, make sure you do because all of those live beat the portals that are going on this week normally happen 24, 48 hours before they hit online. So you get the jump on everyone, which is great. Um, Mike, what's going on in terms of regionally? Any data shared from right move is it still kind of people looking to move to the seaside or yeah a bit of a bounce back effect um particularly in rentals so last year sales and lettings the highest searched areas unsurprisingly was cornwall and i think specifically st ives because 
everyone wants to live in St Ives when they're on holiday. Um, and it's bounced straight back to London, which is traditionally the highest searched area. And I think always has been the highest searched area up until <laughs> last year. So um, we did a podcast with the MD of the Deposit Protection Service a couple of weeks ago, and he said exactly the same thing. They found a lot of people moved southwest out of the cities um, last year, and potentially people are starting to bounce back now. Um, whether they've sort of seen the benefit of what they were doing or whether they decided it was maybe too extreme a move for them um, away from the towns. But London is back, number one searched, demanded place in the UK again. I think it's good for the market, isn't it? I think, in, you know, we sit in the home counties and it's always been a strong property market. But when London's getting negative media, negative feedback, then it does have a little bit of a negative ripple around but that's probably the only thing that you could say in the last 18 months that's had any twinge of negativity on the property market mm -hmm. and you've worked in london um you've worked for developers is that fair i'm not saying it sets the pace but it definitely has a, a big influence in the rest of the country the london market yeah massively yeah it's um i mean I'm, when i was working for one of the, the big corporates in town it, it was always us as the London lot, as opposed to the Buckingham lot, Kent lot, what have you. And it was always, well, what's the London market doing? Because that's what's going to feed the trend for where we're going and what have you. So the London market was always five, three, three to six months ahead of everybody else. Now, whether that's because they were a bit more, I will be careful how I word this, they were a bit more forward thinking rather than the guys outside. And the London market made you do that because there's so much competition there. So there's a lot more going on um, yeah. when the market was busy, but you're competing and the, comp the competition's a lot bigger rather than around here, you might have six or seven developers in a two mile radius. That two mile radius in London, you've got 14 developers all doing different schemes and you're all vying for the same buyer. So yeah. they have to be a little bit more entrepreneurial in terms of their marketing and what we were doing and what have you. But it was always it was always a catalyst to what else the UK market was doing. So it was, um, yeah, it, it's a good barometer. And doing working with the stuff we've got in Slough, which is now just coming to an end, the the fact that London is now getting a lot more activity in terms of positivity, it's making everybody else now think, okay, we, we do need to do something. Yeah, I think that the, the evidence is in as soon as there's a connection link, a London connection link on a train, fast track or anything like that in any town, it instantly has a positive impact on prices and demand and it becomes a strong USP. So um, it shows the influence that it has and it's good that it's bouncing back. Um, Neil loves St Ives, great place to go and visit. Uh, and it's been very popular with Right Move, but now obviously London taking over and I'm not sure if Sean is just clapping that Matt keeps pretending to be him or saying well done to Andy, but we'll go with uh, well done to Andy for his uh, his view on London. Um, I'll take I'll take that. Goes. On cue, on cue, Matt. <laughs> Love that. Okay, okay. Um, that wasn't that that really wasn't deliberate either. My my, my laptop's playing fun and games with me. We love to plug a local business, and if there's anyone that supplies really strong broadband connections, um, <laughs> and Matt a DM. Um, he is waiting for uh, for that DM uh, to come through because he, he might take him a while though. <laughs> yeah. Last week we had some IT related excitement going on with Mike Robinson's laptop that sounded like it was about to take off. Um, so yeah, if you're an IT person out there, apparently dm a few of us we're in need i can't sort my lighting out here because i've got some sort of glare over my screen so yeah jump on and DM us. <laughs> thank you andy i would like to talk <laughs> quickly about five-year fixed deals i'm interested to know what people watching think about five-year fixed deals so when you get a mortgage you get an option for a two or a three or a five-year fixed if interest rates are going down Typically, you want to do a short amount because you hope in two years time, the interest rate will be a little bit lighter and then you can obviously uh, redo it. But every time you do a mortgage, you often pay an application fee and that could be anywhere from five to fifteen hundred, even two thousand pounds sometimes, um, which gets a bit boring and normally you just add it to the loan. But it's another 
thousand pounds, fifteen hundred quid added to your loan. So the question, in a long-winded way, is what do people think at the moment? If you were remortgaging or if you were buying a property, would you go two or would you go three-year fix? And just before kind of answering that, I think everyone's seen the rates uh, for the two years, and they are crazy cheap. But if you got a five-year fixed deal with a 10% deposit at the moment. So if you had 10% equity or you were buying with a 90% mortgage, you can get a rate of 2.14 over five years. Now at 90% with an increase in market, I don't know, would you do that, Mike? Or would you gamble on the fact that maybe in two years you'd have more equity and therefore you'd fall into a lower bracket? What do you think? Um, you do well to get from 10 to 25% in a couple of years. Uh, I'm not saying it's not doable, but you'd, you'd do well to see that sort of increase coming in. Um, my only thoughts on it, I've, I've only ever taken out one five year fixed rate in my entire life and um, I'm about to pay a redemption penalty on it. So take that with a pinch of salt. Yeah. Um, Generally speaking, at the moment, I, 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 if it's my own home, I would I would fix it for as long as possible, as long as I was able to port that mortgage, which means take it with you um, mm -hmm. if you did decide to move. Yeah, I, just, I, think, well, I think things are quite stable. I don't, you know, it's not going to get any better. I guess it depends on your situation. You know, if you're if you're sat in in a property like yours, Andy, and you know, with your family there, you're hoping you're going to be there for another five years the question is you know if you've got um i'm not saying you have because i don't know your personal finances um but let's say someone had 25 percent worth of equity they can get a five-year fixed at 1.49 percent with 25 percent equity which a lot of people that have lived in a property for the last two years will have now because of the way that obviously prices have gone up and because of the the deposits they'd have had to put down two years ago um would you fix for five years if your remortgage was up next next week, or would you sort of gamble I've on a just two? Done it. Five? I've just done it. Yeah. <laughs> well, that In the last the year, I've, I've just done it. Five years. It's just a no brainer. It's just for the for the for all the the talk of the market and the interest rates going up, especially now with the um, the inflation rates going as they are. You know, our interest rate is going to go up. Why would you not fix it at, at the rate that you know we're talking about two percent? It's literally they're giving you the money. It's costing you nothing to. Um, sorry, I was really northern. Nothing. <laughs> uh, it's costing you no, costing you nothing. Nothing to, um, to lend to lend the money. <laughs> um, I have to get the leads bit in. Um, so yeah, it's, it's just a no brainer. But everyone's different. For me, my situation was five year fixed rate was just there was just no no better way of, or no different way of doing it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's as long as you feel comfortable in the house you're in, and like Mike says, if you if you did decide to move, you can always port it if it's on your resi. Might be different if you're talking by to lets. Um, but yeah, 1.49 for a five year fixed deal. If you go down 60 percent loan to value, it's 1.39. Um, the product fees of them are a little bit higher, as you would expect, but they're all free valuations, et cetera, et cetera. So it's quite interesting um, looking at that. So, yeah, I'm interested to know how that unfolds, because I think what we thought, Matt, we all kind of thought when the base rate, it only marginally went up from obviously 0 0.1 to 0 0.25. But we thought that might be the catalyst of banks and lending potentially pushing interest rates up because they were so cheap. That That's what we thought would happen over the last month. That hasn't really happened that way, has it? Well, it's marginally gone up there because if you remember back to sort of November, December time last year, you could get a two year fixed rate mortgage with 60% loans of value at 0.89%. So I think if you look at the same rate, of the same rate, you look at what is it, 1.1 now? Well, actually, oh. I just got emailed um, through my source. I cannot reveal my source because it would be unfair to my source. But I was emailed something that I shouldn't have that tells me that as of when is this kicking in? When is this kicking in? Hold the phone. I know we're live. HSBC back in the market on exactly what you just spoke about down to they're now priced at 0.99%. Yeah, they've just dropped it. They've just dropped it down to 0.99% this week. 
um, and that's HSBC coming back in with a sub 1%. And mm. we, you know, there wasn't any sub 1% on Resi, like you said. Yeah. So it's like, are they going to now get really competitive and and start to look at reducing them? Well, possibly. I mean, there's always a market to be competitive against the rest and they make their money based on how much they lend. And if if there's not a lot, I'm going to go back to Sean. I know what's going on. Sorry. I don't know exactly what's going on, but I'll, I'll come back in a second. My computer wants to restart itself and every time it wants anyway. So if you go back to like competition, property selling, if there's not a lot on the market, there's not a lot of selling, there's, there's less that's selling. So if you've got 50 properties on the market, 45 of them, 40 of them are going to sell. Yeah. If you've got 20 on the market, 20 of them are going to sell because there's still a lack of property out there. Now, are the banks looking at it and making a decision based on the lack of transactions compared to maybe there was six or seven months ago trying to keep interest in buyers' interest there, possibly? Um, are they looking to try and make sure that we can keep a, keep first-time buyers being available with sensible deposits to get them onto the marketplace? I don't know. It's, it's interesting. I mean, yeah. only, only the big dogs at HSBC and everybody else and all the big banks will know the reasons behind it, but they're quite happy to lend the money, so take advantage of it. I think what what we have to look at is why the banks do what they do, Mike. And one thing that I think we're all pretty much concrete on is across the country, there will be less land registry completions this year than there was last year. And that will mean, typically speaking, that there'll be less mortgages being written by the banks this year than last year. So I guess if they were looking at it from a competitive stance and they want to hook people in with their Google hook rates, they're, they're going to stay competitive because if they price themselves out of the market, they're going to lose the opportunity. Is, is that probably a fair analysis, Mike, do you reckon? Well, I think every, everyone who works for a corporation has got a sales target on their head, haven't they? So if they fall behind that number, then the quickest and easiest thing they can do is reduce their price. Um, that's that's quite a straightforward bit of common sense. Um, whether we, I think it's just a prediction really, whether there's less houses or less transactions registered this year than last year, I think certainly it'll be more consistent than it was last year, going from absolute boom to bust month to yeah. month with the various stamp duty holidays, extensions, sort of okey cokies that were that were going on from the government i think we'll actually see some more sustained predictability going on whether it's less i don't know um i think as a business that we're in we'll certainly do more but mm. it's hard to say across the uk there'll be some that lose out yeah no, absolutely from one andy to another um this is directed at you mr mead what is the most in demand property in new homes and how does this compare to normal property demand? What is the home county's most in-demand property as it stands at the moment, would you say? If you could have 10 exes, what would the ex be? I don't mean ex-girlfriends. I mean properties as an example. Right. This is unscripted. So this isn't fair. Um, uh, the most <laughs> in-demand property is um, three and four bedroom housing. Um, so uh, I... I presume that's the same for you guys in terms of the secondhand market but anything that comes on three and four bedroom houses um in our area in our patch um is getting lots and lots of interest i think generally speaking four bed is is the the big one i think four bed trumps three bed drastically um in in the resi market at the moment and I also think the reception room element of thing is significant as well. If we're going to really split hairs and get down to the final detail of, yeah. of the family home, I, I think two reception rooms is a bare minimum for people. So if it's a four bed and it's got an open plan kitchen um, dining room and it's got an integral garage that eats a little bit of the downstairs living space up and it's top heavy, that's not as in demand as garage on the side kitchen breakfast room dining room slash study slash playroom slash gym slash massage room whatever you want to use that second reception room as and living space i think that is the most in demand type of property um anywhere in in this area at the moment matt you're nodding away like one of those dogs on the back of the um, screen 
the amount the amount of registrations that I'm getting from people at the moment, every, every pretty much every call I've had since come back was, I've I've either sold my two and three bedroom house and need a four bedroom and we need to spend this and we need that or whatever, but also the people that took the advantage of selling in a good market at the end of last year when they sold their sort of two or three bedroom houses upsizing to four beds that's what they want everybody wants that everybody wants the additional space because they're working from home is the norm now for, for, for a lot of people and you then find that couples are having to work at home as well when they need their mm. own separate space rather than both being in the living room or one being in the kitchen and one being in the living room so they look at maybe a family unit two kids bedroom one of the bedrooms upstairs uses a study downstairs dining room uses a study convert it back into dining room for dinner in the evening there's so much out there that people need and four beds two reception rooms a couple of bathrooms is is exactly what it is yeah i totally agree i think that's exactly what it is and i think um we speak about this in the podcast mike actually don't we we do we talk about it all the time what's the question um, well <laughs> <laughs> just, 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 <laughs> I thought I thought my face had turned into Sean Egan for a minute. Then I thought you were about to turn into Sean Egan as well. Um, I feel like yeah. I might have a minute. One one of the brokers that we use talks that talks about the race for space. That was how he kind of um, determined it. Really, I, I think it's partly that, and I think it's part that people have got a lot of cash in their pockets from not doing three family holidays. A year, a year for the last two years suddenly found they're a little bit richer than they used to be and as we've said mortgages are really really cheap for them to borrow another hundred two hundred thousand pounds it's really cheap to do it yeah. so you can live in a house that's not a three bed with one reception you can go to a four bed two or three reception rooms for another hundred quid a month and why wouldn't you spend another hundred quid a month to get all that extra space yeah um, absolutely so i think i think there's an element of, of just want rather than need as well at the moment because everyone can make do you know it's first world problems living in a three bedroom house and working on the kitchen table it's it's doable it's not perfect it's a bit of a first world problem but if someone says to you oh, oh sean um if someone says to you for another hundred quid a month you can have a much bigger house and the equity growth on it will be even bigger then you'd be a fool to turn it down so i think a lot of people are doing that i love that um Sean's on next week and we're going to set up Matt's face to pop up for Sean. Um, <laughs> I, th I think that podcast that we record, I'll put the link in the comments for people. The Dom episode that was on, I think, not last week, the week before, is a really good one for people to listen to. But the episode that drops tomorrow is me, Mike and Tristan giving a summary of the, the market. So we do touch on sales and lettings, but it's just family homes, family homes. How much is the value of a family home? And, and Matt, I know you mentioned classic agent style. There's a little bit of overvaluing going on. Um, but what is overvaluing at the moment? I mean, it, there's certain properties that you can almost test the water at a certain price to benefit the client, I guess. But then then there's some crazy figures because not everything is selling within five minutes, is it? There's a lot no, of stock no, no. That's, that's been on for months. I think I think a lot of people are very savvy. A lot of people are very aware of what property prices in their local area sell for because they do enough research even before the estate agent comes around or before we go around. They look at what's sold. They jump onto Zoopla. They have a look at right move. They do a quarter mile radius. Um, but when you when you go out and view, value properties, and there was one a little while ago that I did, and there was a, a four bedroom house that hadn't sold at a say a value. Um, and the the house that I valued or valuing had been valued at seventy five thousand pound more than the one that hadn't sold that had been on the market for the past four weeks. So, what? Why, in my head, would it be sensible to pitch something at seventy five thousand pound more than something had already been on? There's a comparable house four hundred yards away. What makes that seventy five thousand pound different? And. And the only thing I could put it down to is KPI numbers and making sure you need to hit your number mm -hmm. um, because it's easy to tell people what they want to hear and that's easy. But when you go there based on tangible evidence, based on actually looking at what's on the market and how it should be pitched, that's the obvious thing because no, one, if you haven't sold your property in three weeks, 
21 days. I run a, a 14 and 21 day plan with all of my properties that come onto the market. 14 days is to review the initial first 14 days of the marketing. Let's have a look at how we manage it. Has it sold? Has it not? Fortunately for me, <laughs> without sounding arrogant with this statement, all of them are sold within 14 days. So there hasn't been that need to do it. But there's a plan in place. Yeah, thanks. There's a plan in place to make sure that it doesn't get beyond the point of no return. Because once it sits on the market for too long, it's then. But these properties will sit on the market for longer than three weeks. Mm. And you'll yeah. do the typical thing of having a look at when it's reduced online, getting back and going, oh, why is that reduced? What's wrong with it? Now, you don't want to be that person in that situation because if all people are already making assumptions as to what the condition or the reasons why it hasn't sold, they're not going to be as interested to go and view it. Hence why you've got to get the headline price right at the start. So yeah. if you hear massive asking prices, really challenge it. Where's the tangible evidence to support the property is worth that much? And if there can't be a tangible proof of that as to it being worth that much, then question why they're telling you that. I think also it's important in this market to just put a property on the market for a price. It doesn't need to be a fixed price. So, you know, it can go above that price. We're in that market where someone wants it and they don't want to lose that home because it's that family home. And they think, actually, for me, I'll, pen, I'll spend 10 grand more than the price and, and I'll get it for that. And I'm really happy. Everyone's happy. Mm. Um, Andy, um, I'm going to link this back to new homes because Mike's asked a question around other Mike about apartments and leaseholds. So just sort of yes. talking, talking new homes in general, what's your kind of take at the moment about the amount of reach we're getting through social media for first time buyers, first time seller, second time buyer markets? How important is social media to the property market at the moment in your view? Because now you've got the data to kind of talk about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you finding? It's, ma it's massive. I mean, I'll let me... Um... What can we use? Let me show. I'll just. We've got a site which they've literally just started digging now. So, fully instructed on it. It's going to be available from the market from around about the summertime. So they're just starting to build now, and I've set up a campaign with the developer that will do teaser adverts starting from first of January, middle of January, then mid end of February, blah blah blah, sort of going on. So literally a bit of a, a brand awareness. Um, for the for the customer because where they're building they've never built before so there's a lot of people that wouldn't know who they are so the the the, the adverts that have gone out so far are coming soon this is what's coming soon then the next advert was about the developer blah blah blah, blah. um so of those two adverts um impressions so the impressions that's the number of times the advert was on the screen of the buyer or the screen of the post purchaser was 4,254. So that's a reach of 4,254 people. Of that impressions, there's a reach. Now the reach is the number of people who saw the a video and the, ad, and the advert at least once. So that's 2,613 people have seen the whole video at least once. Now the final results, and this is what made me sort of smirk a little bit, and people who say, right, my, uh, Facebook doesn't work, the results are of the uh, the overall views of the video is 3,049. So that means over 418 people roughly have viewed the video more than once. So that's 414 people. And that doesn't need, that includes the people that then have directly contacted me that we've now got this database of buyers. So for the scheme for five units, I've already got a database of buyers of 26 people. It's amazing, isn't it's it? It's friend. amazing. No portal advertising, no need for it at this stage. And to put it well, in context... Think it need to go, I don't even think it needs to go on the portals. So, you know, when we do the next advert in uh, the next feature in, in February, you know, we've already built an audience. So then that audience is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, so it's I don't even think we need to use the portals beat the portals hashtag, hashtag yeah and this portals. is and these are detached houses yeah yeah it's powerful stuff um to put that into context for people listening typically speaking if you're a, an average estate agent which obviously we're not but if you were an average estate agent um a branch would say it's top kind of performing three or four properties is roughly getting about 200 250 clicks Sean, what do you think? Okay, we'll come back to Sean. Um, 
and in those link clicks that's roughly the same as what you're talking about so you know the top performing properties for for an average estate agent is about 200 clicks obviously you're seeing 3000 watches of the video is why we're so passionate about video marketing property videos and hopefully the public see that that's the stretch if we go back to the core value of what avocado property is about it's about making it better for the client and innovating the way that marketing is done for properties no longer should there just be seven average photos and a floor plan chucked on right move with the old classic set in a lovely cul-de-sac location close to local amenities and commuter rinks it's the best plot on the development like it you just can't be doing that kind of tailor nonsense anymore this is about real scientific data that andy's sharing and it's powerful stuff so yeah i appreciate you sharing as well yeah the benefit for the for the developer is is not just getting the the buyers that we're now building this database up but it's the brand awareness for that development firm and that name and that developer so the individual house sellers that matt ian mike you deal with their brand is their property this developer's brand could be six properties seven properties per site so when you start mentioning the name of the developer people will automatically engage and think oh yeah they're building there if they didn't know about that name that developer though they could be joe blogs mm. never heard of them but when you mention yeah. the name of the developer oh yeah they're so it's all about brand awareness as well as as um customer awareness yeah love it's that. understanding Absolutely how to love use it. it's understanding how to use the social media no, it's powerful point, it's really powerful point, but honest, it's, it's understanding how to use it it's trying to cut you off andy i don't i don't know i don't know if you've noticed that i think i just talk too much i'm a little bit passionate i get a little bit passionate about the things that i do <laughs> start crying, I'm boiling up now. but no it's but no i do because because it works and that's I, I just want people to understand that it's not just chucking an advert out and putting a meet new homes banner up outside the house it's actually proper scientific marketing to get the buyers it's hard hosting these you know sometimes it's no only there's only <laughs> half an hour to share <laughs> And I, I don't want to be the bad guy that always cuts people off. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to be that guy cutting people off. So what I'm going to do in future is, if it's gone on too long, if someone's answered for too long, I'm just going to do that. Which is or why, just replace why it, that replace their video interview. with Sean's face or something, and then they'll know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's yeah, 6:29. Mike so Robinson asked the question. <laughs> it's now 6:38. <laughs> um, in classic style, we've gone over. Um, the normal <laughs> half an hour allocation and we know people have got things to do and kids to put to bed so we don't like to drag it on although we've missed quite a few topics that I would love to have spoken about things things that we would definitely push into next week to discuss um, some char a charity that we partnered with that I'm really excited to talk about um, we haven't really touched on the network that we were going to talk about as well um, we slightly plugged the landlord podcast and we were going to share a little bit more information for buyers and some tips on how to get the edge. But there is a blog going out tomorrow at 1230 it does have some tips. If you're thinking of selling and you want to buy some awesome tips on there on how to get the edge as a buyer that's selling. Um, so definitely check that blog out 1230 tomorrow at launches. I'll obviously share that on all the pages. But yeah, if anyone's got any questions outside of this chat, DM any of us. Uh, but Mike, Matt, slash Sean and Andy, um, thank you for uh, jumping on this evening. I've really enjoyed this chat. It's, it doesn't feel like we've been speaking for 39 minutes. That is for sure. So um, thanks to everyone's questions. Thanks for all the likes. And we'll see you next week, Thursday, six o'clock.